the precious blood of the Lamb. You musicians and workers, and a good morning to you all. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Jonah, chapter 4. Jonah, chapter 4. Uh, former Secretary of State Dean Rusk he was in office during the Kennedy and Johnson administrations during the Cold War. Tensions are very high, and uh, they held some meetings in Europe to try to deal with some of the dangers and, and uh, tensions. When his plane landed after this conference, a reporter put a microphone in front of him and shouted, what are the chances for peace and he re responded, it all depends on whether man is a rational or an emotional creature. That's a profound statement. In other words, he is saying the future is determined by our reaction to emotions. And that is uh, actually true in all of life. The scripture that we're going to read, a man named Jonah... He is dealing with a situation and he reacts with emotion. And so God asks him a question, do you have the right or are you doing right by being angry or emotional? And the answer to that question is actually going to determine not just Jonah's future, but your future as well. Is it right that your life is based on emotion. I want to preach about deadly emotions from Jonah chapter 4, starting at verse 1. The Bible says, But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I pled previously to Tarshish, for I know that you're a gracious, gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness. You are one who relents from doing harm. Therefore, now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Verse 5, So Jonah went out of the city, sat on the east side of the city, made himself a shelter, sat under it in the shade till he might see what would happen to the city. The Lord prepared a plant It made it come up over Jonah that it might be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But as morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm and it so damaged the plant that it withered. And so it happened when the sun arose, God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat on Jonah's bald head so that he grew what? <laughs> so that he grew faint. That was the Greg Mitchell version. Then he wished death for himself and said, it is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, it is right for me to be angry even to death. But the Lord said, you had pity on the plant for which you didn't labor or make it grow came up in a night, perished in a night. Should I not pity Nineveh, the great city in which there's more than 120,000 people who can't discern between their right hand and their left and much livestock? Deadly emotion. Let's look at the roots of emotion. Human beings are emotional creatures. We don't just think, we have feelings. And that is very much the way God has made us. The Bible says we are created in three parts, body, soul, and spirit, and that part of the soul includes emotions. Jesus says you are to love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and again, soul involves emotions. So, every person here, you have emotions, you feel things. Sometimes you feel good things, joy, pleasure, accomplishment. You feel bad things, fear, anger, bitterness, pain, depression. By definition, an emotion is a strong mental or instinctive feeling 
or state of mind, what this means is that you feel things without having to choose it. It just happens. Verse 1, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he became angry. He didn't have to try. He didn't say, come on, Jonah, we can get mad. It just happened. And you, I don't, I don't get technical, but things happen in your body. That's why people say, I, I, I felt warm inside. That's literally true. Good things produce physical sensations. I felt sick to my, that was true. It produces physical things. So, Think about the roots of emotion for a moment. This scripture, of course, is dealing with anger, but this is true of all emotions. Think about the roots of that. There are internal roots. Every different person, you are very different probably than the person who is sitting next to you. That can be because of genetics. That can be because of chemicals and hormones. Some people are more emotional than others. I was talking, Lisa and I were talking with a, a mother. We could go about the difference between boys and girls. And she says her little girl cries all the time. And they ask her, uh, asked her one time, why are you uh, crying? She goes, I don't know. Sometimes I just cry. <laughs> Very different than her brother. And uh, that, that is true. Internal roots. Emotions often are a reaction to events or circumstances. It's natural. If you lose your jo job, crash your car, your dog dies, you're going to feel things, depending on the dog, of course. But uh, you're going to be sad. You're going to be upset. That is very, you are reacting to circumstances. In our scripture, Jonah is reacting to disappointment. He had certain things that he really wanted to happen. He felt the way things should happen, and it didn't happen. He's disappointed, verse 2. Isn't this what I said when I was still in my country? So he has anger. It's an emotion. He's reacting to the events of life. And then, of course, emotions can be rooted in past experiences. The reason why Jonah was so upset was because the Ninevites had attacked and killed his people years before very destructive and so the past now is still producing emotion for some people that is a past failure to learn to control emotions there some of you here you were raised in an atmosphere of emotion you have never seen anyone sit down and talk about a problem without screaming you don't know how to do that because you've never seen it before. That's, that's what you do. If you disagree, you scream, you yell. And, and so you have never, you know, you can talk about difficult things. You don't have to scream. So somebody write that down. That's, that's an amazing revelation right there. Some of you, you never had to learn to control your emotion. You know, when I was growing up in our house, when we got in trouble, we got punished in various ways. Uh, and so... Uh, the, the point in life is not to live without emotion. We were allowed to have emotion, but they had limits. We would cry, and naturally so, because our punishment hurt. And so, uh, but there would come a point at which dad would say, he'd look and he'd say, okay, snub it. And what that meant is the emotion's going to stop. And we had to learn to control. That was a life lesson. Some of you never learned that. You never had anybody your whole life. You're allowed to rage and smash things and say, I hate you and go on and on and on and make everybody. You've never learned how to control. So now in life, that's totally normal. You don't like something. Your emotions are out of control. You cannot rein it in. Some people, it's past events that pr produced emotions. You went through divorce, abandonment, abuse, poverty, sickness, death, rejection, and so Inside, you are filled with fear, rejection, anxiety, insecurity, depression. And then, of course, some of you, it is learned patterns of emotional manipulation. You had people that they gave you the lesson, I will make you pay if you don't give me what I want or do what I want. And so for you, that is a normal way to approach, a, approach relationships. I'm giving all that as a background emotions 
Everyone has them. I've given you some of the roots of why they may be stronger in you than in others. Here is the problem with emotions. When your emotions are elevated to decision-making capacity, that's when it's a problem. It's not a problem to feel. It's when your emotions determine your decisions and actions. In our scripture, what is Jonah going to decide to do whatever his emotions tell him to do? For some people, emotion becomes the highest court of appeal in their lives. What should I do in this relationship, in this job, in this ministry, in my salvation, whatever it is? It is not going to be based on what is right. It's not going to be based on what does God say in his word. It's not going to be based on what's best for others. It is simply, how do I feel? So therefore, emotions run decisions. You know, some people, literally, their emotions are a god. It is the highest value in their life. For some people, they value their emotions. For some people, their emotion is a point of pride. It's, I, I got to tell the truth. I got to call it like it is. That's why you can't hold a job. And, and to you, you're proud of that. And I just told him, I just said, and, and that's why you break relationships. People say, I, I have to serve and obey my feelings. In this scripture, it's interesting, verse 3, please take my life from me, for it's better for me to die than to live. Jonah says, I can't function. Why? Because of the way I feel. I can't go on. There is no point in carrying on in life because of the way that I feel. Listen, let me help you with something. Decisions that are based in emotion are almost always bad ones. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Decisions that are based on emotions are almost always bad. Listen, if you choose something based only on, on emotion, you might even choose the right thing, but it will rarely last. Jesus tells the parable about the seed of the word of God that lands in a stony ground or a stony heart, and it says that they receive the word of God with joy. It's like, wow, it's wonderful to be a Christian. It's wonderful to be saved. That's great. It feels right. But what happens when it doesn't feel right? Jesus says, as soon as a problem comes, the person who chose only because of how it feels, they don't last over time and they turn their back on God. Listen, if the only reason why you're married is how you feel, you're not going to stay married. I, I'm married because we were in love. What happens when you don't feel that? That's why people were not in love, so we shouldn't be married. Because you made an emotional decision. If the only reason why you're saved is how you feel. So, this is what happens to people because emotion is the basis of their decisions. Then when the emotion changes, they doubt that it was ever real. I must have never been saved. I must have never really been called. Uh, uh, I must never have really been in love. If you base decisions only on emotion, usually what you choose is going to be wrong. Old song, this will date me, but how can it be wrong when it feels so right? You know what emotion will do? Emotion will get you into situations you have no business being in. Some of you, you bought things. You had no business buying. It was an emotional decision. You got in, you smelled that smell. I need this car. It made you feel young again. And the next morning you thought, what have I done? Because you made an emotional decision. Some of you get in relationships, emotional, and those are, those are bad choices. Emotion causes you to get out of situations you really need to be in. Jobs. 
It's really good to have a job and pay the bills. Ministries, relationships, marriage, salvation. Listen to this. The LAPD reported that 80% of morning rush hour accidents are caused by people who had earlier been involved in arguments with their mates before leaving home. In other words, you don't drive well when you're emotional. For some of you, you should never drive. That's, that's the lesson. <laughs> that is the lesson right there. So that, that's the point. It affects your decision making. Let's talk secondly about the dangers of emotion. Our text is based on a question. Is it right or do you have the right? That'd be another way of looking at it. To have this emotion and to base your decision on it. So, our text shows us the danger of emotion is Jonah is wrong. This is the problem with emotion. We think because we have emotions, that means what I feel must be right. Verse 9, is it right for you to be angry? And he said, it is right for me to be angry even to death. See, this is what emotion will tell you. It must be real or I wouldn't feel this way. I feel it very much, so it must be very true. But that's not true at all. Listen, let me tell you something about emotions. Emotions lie. Feelings lie. Have you ever had this in life? You ever looked up, you know, across the room, you saw somebody laughing and they happened to look at you and all of a sudden their parent was like, they're laughing at me. And, and in your mind, now there's this whole scenario. They're, they were laughing with somebody. They're talking about me. They're laughing at you. And later on, you have a cut. That, when you look, they're like, what? He showed me a cat video. <laughs> what? It wasn't. So you felt it. <laughs> and because you felt it, you think it's real. But it was a lie. That, that's Jonah. I, I feel it. So I know that it must be true. But Jonah, it's wrong. This is what happens. People make destructive decisions on the basis of emotions that are lying to them. They make decisions based on things that are simply not true. It's completely inaccurate. Or they make decisions on things that were true, but they haven't been true for many, many years. It does not make sense to make decisions that destroy your life today over things that happened 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. That doesn't make sense. Or it doesn't make sense to make decisions over things that are real, but it's not worth destroying your life over. So here's Jonah. If I die, I know that I'm right. Jonah, that doesn't make sense. Emotions are personally damaging. One of the things that happens, emotions literally affect your brain. The reasoning part of your brain doesn't work well. It is overloaded by chemicals. So you make bad choices. Here's Jonah. God says, do you think you're doing right by being angry? And he goes, I need to die. That, that's not a smart thing to say to God right emotions open the door to other bad influences Harvard Medical School says drug abusers are often trying to escape from uncomfortable or intolerable feelings they feel something maybe that's the past maybe that's their I don't know why but they feel something so it opens the door to addictions then, of course, negative emotions can make you physically sick. That's not what this sermon is about. There is a book literally called Deadly Emotions that deals with this. Guilt, fear, anger, bitterness are things that can literally produce physical sickness. But our scripture goes on and says, feelings always involve and affect other people. The problem with people who have strong feelings is they think other people are the source of why they feel this way. 
This is Jonah. I'm unhappy because of them. It's the Ninevites. But when God speaks to him, God doesn't deal with the Ninevites. He deals with Jonah. He says, Jonah, this is in you. You're not unhappy because of them. You're unhappy because you're unhappy. That's in you. This is what happens in relationships. There are people that they get into a relationship, a friendship, a marriage, a ministry, whatever it might be, and then they get unhappy. And so then they are irritated, they're angry like Jonah, they're ticked off, they're upset, they're sad, they're teary, their emotions are wet. Why do you feel this way? Because of them. Look at what they're doing, look at what they're not doing. But if you could be honest, um, this is not the first time this happened. Right? You had another friend. What happened to that friend? Well, they did and they said, and the one before that? And they, how many times does this happen before you begin to suspect you? Right? The old, the old joke, Little boy saying to his dad, Dad, how come all the jerks come out when you drive? <laughs> so, in our scripture, here's the problem when you start making bad emotional decisions. You try to make other people respond to your emotions. You try to manipulate, which means change their mind or their will. You know what Jonah is doing here? God, you might as well kill me. There's no point in living. He's trying to manipulate God into going, man, you're upset. I'm going to go kill some Ninevites right now. But this is what emotional people do. They use anger, tears, silence, sex, whatever it might be. Give me what I want or I'm going to make you pay. 1 Kings 21.4 Ahab went home sullen and angry because Nabal the Jezreelite said, I won't give you the inheritance of my father. He lay on his bed sulking and he refused to eat. Here's a grown man acting childish. I don't want dinner. Laying on the bed, what's wrong? <laughs> Nothing. Because he had learned if I let everybody know that I'm upset, they'll go, oh, oh, okay, okay, we'll give you what you want. That's not a healthy way to live. Many, many years ago, another country I was uh, counseling a marriage, this uh, lady said, can you tell my husband to talk to me? And I said, what do you mean? She said, we argued three weeks ago. He's not said a word to me. We sit down to dinner. He'll say to my daughters, Tell your mother to pass the soul. You know what he's doing? He's trying to make her pay so that she won't ever disagree with him. Again, and our scripture then winds up, emotions cause destruction to other people. You live by emotion, it will blind you to the needs of other people. It will blind you to the damage you're doing. Verse 11, shouldn't I pity Nineveh, the great city, in which more than 120,000 people live and they don't know their right from their left. They can't. So, so God is saying, Jonah, wait, let, let me get this straight. You're upset. You're disappointed. So they're going to die. And that makes sense to you? Yes. You're, you're going to make your spouse and the whole family miserable? And that makes sense to you? You're going to teach your children rebellion and manipulation that will doom their lives? That makes sense to you? You're going to do damage to ministries, to churches? People will potentially wind up in hell because you're upset. That makes sense? And unfortunately, there are people who say yes, absolutely. 1972, a British European Airways pilot, he was angry. They'd been on strike. They settled it. He didn't like the way it was settled. Then when he took off, he was already upset. 
he felt the cargo was uh, loaded unevenly, so he got more upset, so he got mad and yanked the controls, overcorrecting, caused the plane to dive into the runway and killed 118 men, women and children. Emotion. You, you, you want to kill yourself, that's, that's bad enough. But here's innocent people, they got to die because of your emotion. No, that doesn't make sense. And then, of course, it's possible that our emotions can displease God, which is why God is confronting Jonah. Let's talk finally about healing and controlling emotions. I love the Bible. It's an honest book. Here's Jonah, supposed to be a prophet, a hero. He's not very heroic. But God doesn't give up on Jonah. He speaks to Jonah to help him overcome destructive emotions, or the title of the sermon, Deadly Emotions. This is killing you, Jonah. So how do you overcome deadly emotions? Number one, you need emotional awareness. What God is doing, he's making him examine his emotion. Verse four, is it right for you to be angry. Do you have the right? He's making you examine himself. Some of you, emotion is as normal as breathing. But, but God says, wait, if you were to examine yourself, what emotions cause you the most problems in life? You had problems in a relationship. What was the dominant emotion in that relationship? Was it anger? Was it fear? Was it envy, jealousy? You need to examine that. How have emotions affected your jobs, your ministry, ministries, your family, your marriage? For some of you, do you know the root of your emotion? I quickly shotgunned a few different roots of emotion. Do you know why you feel things so strongly? Some of you, you react today that is totally out of line with any level of the problem. Maybe, maybe it's fear. Maybe there's hurt that's still, I don't know. That's, that's between you and God. He's having a conversation with God. That is what you have to do. God, you got to help me. Why am I like this? Help me so that I can change. Second thing is you have to own your negative emotions. God is a God of truth. And I'll tell you something about God. He doesn't bless lies. When you say it's because of all the other jerks in the world, God's not going to let you get away with that. When you repeatedly damage relationships and ministries and jobs and on and on and on, you are never going to be healed unless you own it. Unless you come to the point and say, at some level, I am doing this. I am the one causing the problems. A great Bible word is to confess. Confess doesn't mean you need to go into a box with a priest. Confess means to agree with God. God is saying, this is not right, Jonah. When we confess, we say, look, I see the trail of my emotions. This is not right. You know what? I believe that Jonah did ultimately get it right. You know why? Because he's the one who wrote the book. So the book ends. It doesn't tell us of his decision, but apparently he must have decided to fix it because he's the one who wrote it down. Thirdly, you need to meet with God. That's where true healing comes from. You cannot overcome destructive or deadly emotions by me saying, don't feel that way. That's not going to work. What you need is a miracle. Some of you need healing. There, there's deep roots to your emotion. You need healing. You need God to change you. You, you build strength through prayer. Watch and pray, Jesus said so you don't enter temptation. The Word of God, you need to fill your mind and your heart with the Word of God. Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Listen to this. There's some marriage counselors, they've written, written, written 
some, some good books, Les and Leslie Parrott. They were flying in a small plane and the pilot said the most important thing about landing is the attitude of the plane. Les said, you mean altitude, don't you? And he said, no, no, attitude. Attitude has to do with the nose of the plane. If the attitude is too high, the plane will come down with a severe bounce. If the attitude is too low, the plane may go out of control because of excessive landing speed. Listen to this. He said, the trick is to get the right attitude in spite of atmospheric conditions. That's, that's very profound. What we need to do is meet with God so we can get our attitude or our emotions right and then finally you need to begin making right decisions in the area of emotions do you know what you can choose to control your emotions we have sayings that excuse it away it's because i'm latin it's because i'm irish no it's because that's the way you want to be and so god he wouldn't tell us to control our emotions if it was impossible. It is possible. C.S. Lewis says, the heart never takes the place of the head, but it can and should obey the head. Dr. Robert Jeffress said, I find it's a lot easier to act yourself into a feeling than it is to feel yourself into an action. The Bible is a practical book. Colossians 3.8 says, now you're, you yourselves are to put off all of these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy language out of your your mouth so the bible says part of being a christian part of being a healthy human being is there are things that you put off for some of you emotion is just as normal you put on your anger your fear your depression it's just normal i get up in the morning i put god says no there are some things you need to put off normally how i react would be but I'm going to put that off. I'm going to choose not to do that. And then the Bible practically says in Colossians 3.12, as God's cho uh, chosen people, put on or clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, and patience. You can choose to act differently. You need a miracle. It has to be more than a choice. But as you ask God for help, when you encounter God, fill your mind with the word of God, put things off, put things on, God meets with us so that it becomes natural. We change in the area of emotions. Listen to this. For 33 years, Yul Brenner played the King of Siam in the musical, The King and I. 33 years, he played the same role night after night. They said in earlier years, they had to put makeup on Yul Brynner so that he would resemble the part he was going to play. But they said by the time he reached his six, 60s, he no longer required makeup. He had become the part. That is kind of imperfect way of saying that's what God does in us. We recognize there are some things, in this case, emotions. This is not healthy the way I react. I need a miracle. I need you to heal me. Help me to see this clearly. I want to change. I own it. I come in contact with you. I make decisions. No, I'm not going to give in to that emotion. I'm going to act differently. But what begins to happen is that is what you become. It's no longer restraining, but I must not snap. You become something very different by a miracle of God. That is salvation. Listen, salvation doesn't just save you from hell. Salvation can save you from deadly emotion so you can live a much healthier and a much better life. Let's bow our heads. Close our eyes all across this place. If you would, before we do anything else, thank God. I do want to give an opportunity. There are people that are here. You need, need to make a decision, not simply on the basis of emotion. You need to make a decision based on what is right. And the Bible tells us about our greatest problem. We are 
sinners, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have broken God's commands. Some of you, maybe it was emotion that led you down that road of sin. And yet here is what is right. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sin. You can be healed from your sin. You can be forgiven. You can be changed. God can do a miracle inside of you. What you need to do is choose on the basis of what is right. The Bible calls this repentance. I change my mind about my sin. I'm going to live differently. I believe that Jesus died. I want to live differently. So God, forgive me and give me the power to live a new life in your power. I'm asking how many people here you have never chosen that before, but God is dealing with you. You want to turn from your sin. You want God to change you from the inside out. While our heads are bowed, if God's dealing with you and you want to pray this morning for salvation, I want you to do this. Lift up your hand so I can see it. By lifting your hand, you're saying, Pastor Greg, I need Jesus. I'm not right with God. I know that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate your hand. How many others? You need to be saved. I want to turn from my sin. Amen. A hand over here. God bless you. Thank you. How many others? Join these. I need to get right with God. Some of you are backslidden. This is what happens to backsliders. Often an emotion leads them astray. How many backsliders? Lift up your hand. I want to come back to God. I got off track, but I want to come back to God. How many backsliders? Lift up your hand. I'm not saved. I need to be saved. I need Jesus. Lift up your hand all across this place as God would deal with people. God wants to help you. Thank God. You have to own where you're at in life. That's what God wants. Honesty is the first step to healing on any level. Anybody else? Lift up your hand. Quickly, we're going to open the altars in a moment for some other people to pray. But first of all, I'm praying for salvation. You need Jesus. Amen. Thank God. Then if you lifted your hand, nobody else. Ma'am, did you mean that? You are sincere. God bless you. Over here, you're sincere. Come here. I want to have somebody pray with you. Come here. Ma'am, if you'll come out of your seat, I'm going to have somebody pray with you. God bless you. Everybody else, I want you to stand to your feet. Just find a place to pray. God bless you. A lady's going to come pray with our sister here. God bless you. I'm going to open the altar.